Shabbat Shalom and praise the Lord, everyone. I hope everyone had a wonderful Sabbath day and uh, rested in the Lord uh, and enjoyed the blessing of the Holy Sabbath once again. Isn't it wonderful to have a weekly holiday? We don't have to wait uh, for yearly holidays to rejoice or to celebrate. We can celebrate every single week with the blessing of a weekly holiday that God has given all humanity. Uh, this is Pastor Isaac Soria, uh, pastor of Apostolic Tabernacle. And uh, I just want to pick up again where we laugh, left off last week uh, with the Jewishness of the book of Acts. Last week, I spoke a little bit about the Jewishness of Acts 2.38, how that all three aspects of what is uh, generally called the plan of salvation that is bound up in Acts chapter 2, verse 38, repentance, water baptism in Jesus' name, and infilling of the Ruach HaKodesh, the Holy Ghost, that all three of those things are actual Jewish uh, doctrines, they're Jewish ideas, and really, uh, in a way, they're Jewish rituals. The, the uh, uh, repentance is teshuva in Hebrew, that's a Jewish idea. Um, water baptism by immersion is tevila in a mikvah, a ritual bath that is Jewish also uh, in the name of Yeshua, and then all, the infilling of the Ruach HaKodesh, the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost, uh, is a Jewish idea that comes all the way back from the prophets of old and going back to Moses and the Old Testament, the Tanakh. Um, this week, I want to just go through a little bit uh, more of the Jewishness of the book of Acts. Uh, and we can start in chapter 1, uh, where the story picks up in between Passover and Pentecost, in between Pesach and Shavuot, uh, the two Jewish pilgrimage holidays, two of three, um, there are three pilgrimage holidays in uh, the Old Testament, in the Tanakh, uh, and that is Passover and Pentecost and the Feast of Tabernacles, uh, known in Hebrew as the Shalosh Regalim. And for these three holidays, uh, the Jewish people, Israelites, were commanded to appear before the Lord in the city where his name was, and that ended up being in Yerushalayim, in Jerusalem. And so pilgrims would come all over from all over the region and travel specifically specifically to Jerusalem for these holidays. And the book of Acts picks up in between these two holidays, really. And it uh, starts with the ascension of Yeshua after his resurrection. And uh, th these are not just, uh, just throwaway days. These are not just uh, a waiting period of time that are in insignificant on the Jewish calendar, but uh, where the book of Acts starts up is right in the middle of a time called the counting of the Omer. And the Omer is a, a, a measurement of grain. I believe it's like a sheaf uh, in Old Testament times. And uh, of course, those are both harvest festivals. Uh, Passover and uh, Pentecost are both harvest festivals. And so they began to harvest uh, the grain at this time and uh, count them uh, leading up to the day of Pentecost. There are seven weeks, 49 days in between these two holidays. Um, and uh, every day was a countdown essentially to Pentecost. Uh, and each day was counted down, the counting of the Omer. There are seven Sabbaths in between those days. And Yeshua was resurrected on the first of these Sabbaths. Uh, Miaton Shabbaton, the first of the Sabbaths, of the counting of the Omer. And so that is where the book of Acts picks up, right in the middle of this uh, intermediate holiday between Pesach and Shavuot. And so the, the Bible doesn't pick up in just some ordinary day. It picks up during the counting of the Omer. Uh, when God divinely poured out his Holy Ghost, his, his spirit of prophecy, he did so on the Jewish holiday of Shavuot. And he did so at... 9 a.m., which is significant because 9 a.m. is the morning prayer service uh, for traditional prayer times. During the Babylonian captivity, the Jewish people established uh, uh, ritual prayer times uh, that coincided with the times of the sacrifices in the temple in uh, Jerusalem. Of course, when they were captive in Babylon, they could no longer offer sacrifices and since they could not offer up uh, sacrifices, 
they substituted prayer instead of sacrifice, and they coordinated the times of prayer with the times of sacrifice in the temple. Uh, the Bible commanded a uh, daily offering, the tamid offering of a lamb, every single morning and every single uh, evening at twilight, uh, and this was called the daily offering or the tamid. And so since they couldn't offer up uh, lambs in Babylon, they established morning prayer and they established evening prayer. And later, uh, when Solomon came to power, he established a third time so that there were three uh, prayer services a day in the captivity. And this is why we read Daniel praying morning, noon, and night. Uh, these, these three prayer services were established during the captivity and continued up until this day. The morning prayer service is called shacharit, which means morning. And that is normally done on a, on a weekday, usually before work hours, uh, very early, usually around 6 or 7 in the morning. 8 is usually late for a shacharit, and I believe 9 is the latest. And sometimes on holidays, uh, it is a, more of a 9 a.m. Uh, prayer service as opposed to a week uh, day, a work day. Um, the afternoon prayer is called the mincha, uh, the mincha prayer. And there are actually two of those. One that is about noon, uh, we'd have to get into the Jewish calendar and the Jewish 24-hour uh, period, how that's reckoned uh, throughout the different uh, seasons of the year. Uh, in winter, the, the mincha uh, comes a little bit earlier than in the summertime because it's reckoned by uh, hours of sunlight. So uh, during the winter time, it's usually around 11, 11.30, and summertime, it's later uh, around 12.30 or so, and uh, these are all very uh, precisely calculated depending on where you live and so forth. Uh, but there are two of those. There was the Mincha uh, Gedola, which is at, around noon, which means the great uh, lunchtime prayer, essentially, afternoon prayer. Uh, and then there's the Mincha Ketan, which means the small uh, afternoon prayer, and which is around the ninth hour of the day, uh, around 3 or 3.30 p.m. in the afternoon. And then after that, there is the evening prayer, the Ma'ariv, also called the Arvit, uh, which is uh, usually, uh, sometimes they have prayer meetings around uh, 9 or 10 o'clock at night. Many synagogues will combine the Mincha and the Ma'ariv and have a joint prayer uh, sometime around 5.30ish, uh, at least at, during this time of the year. Uh, sometimes later, maybe seven-ish uh, later on in the summertime. But those are the three prayer services that were established by Israel going all the way back to the temple times and the captivity times, really. And we find that even after the, the Shlichim, the apostles, received the Holy Ghost, after they were born again of water and spirit, they continued the Jewish traditional customs of prayer services. In the book of Acts, number one, when the Holy Ghost was poured out, it was poured out during the Shacharit morning prayer service. The Jewish customs were kept up in the book of Acts. Uh, fast forward to chapter three in the book of Acts, uh, when Peter and John were going up to the temple at the hour of prayer, the ninth hour, Acts chapter three, verse one says, uh, they, lamed the, they healed the lame man at the gate beautiful. And the scripture says they went up at the ninth hour of prayer, which is uh, Mincha Ketan. It is the 3 p.m., 3.30-ish uh, p.m. prayer service, the, the afternoon, the second afternoon prayer service. So there again, we find two Holy Ghost-filled men of God, men that were baptized in the name of Jesus, in the name of Yeshua. They had been filled with the Holy Ghost, saved, sanctified, uh, filled with the Holy Ghost, speaking in tongues, uh, believers in the oneness of God that still kept the Jewish customs of their forefathers. They still kept the Jewish traditions of Israel and continued to live according to that spiritual structure for their lives and continued to keep up Mincha Katan in Acts chapter 3. We could go ahead a little bit further uh, to where the first uh, Gentile came into the church. The Ethiopian eunuch was not the first Gentile. The Ethiopian eunuch uh, 
by all means, a, a black individual, an African a person, was a convert to uh, Judaism, and he was 100% Jewish. You do not have to be uh, related by blood to become a Jew. You can convert and become a Jewish person. So the eunuch in Acts chapter 8 was a Jewish man from Africa. The first Gentile that was saved is Cornelius and his whole household in Acts chapter 10. Now, let me just say this real quick, that when God decided to uh, move towards the Gentile people and begin to uh, open the doors of the gospel to them and open uh, the doors of the Holy Ghost outpouring to the Gentile people, he did not go to the outright idolaters first. He did not go to the people that were drinking blood and that were offering up uh, animal sacrifices uh, to, to demons, etc. He went to Cornelius, who the Bible says feared God. Now that is also a specific term ref referring to uh, one that was called a God-fearer or a proselyte at the gates. And what that was is a man, a Gentile person, that lived exactly as a Jewish person lives. Uh, they probably ate kosher, they observed the laws of kashrut, and they kept the Jewish traditions, they celebrated Shabbat, uh, they celebrated the Chagim, the holidays, uh, throughout the year, and they kept the Moadim, the appointed times of the Lord, and they probably wore tzitzit and all that. They were very much in every way uh, living the traditional Jewish life of the time, short of actual conversion. They stopped short of actual circumcision and the uh, process of conversion for the time, which required animal sacrifice also. And so they were living as Jews, but yet had not undergone the actual conversion of circumcision and mikvah and of sacrifice at that time. But other than that, they lived as Jewish people live and worshiped the God of the Bible, uh, Adonai. And so uh, that is what Cornelius was. So when God was looking out across humanity, deciding who the first Gentile that should receive the Holy Ghost uh, should be, he decided to choose Cornelius, who lived according to the traditional Jewish lifestyle that we are going back to today in the Apostolic Church. God gave the Holy Ghost to Cornelius and his whole household, and I want you to know that the Bible says uh, in Acts chapter 10 that Cornelius was praying about the third hour of the day. Uh, let me just find the verse for you here right now. Uh, first, we uh, before we get to him, we have Peter also who was praying and received a vision also. They both had uh, visions. Peter had a vision and Cornelius had a vision. And the Bible says that Cornelius was praying at the ninth hour of the day also. So Cornelius, when he got his vision, was praying at the hour of the Mincha Katan, uh, the second afternoon uh, after uh, Jewish hour of prayer. When Peter got his vision, Holy Ghost filled, baptized in Jesus' name, apostolic, tongue-talking believer, Peter was praying on the rooftop about the sixth hour, which is Mincha Gedolah, the great hour, uh, afternoon hour of prayer. And so both of these men were praying at the traditional hours of Jewish prayer services for that day. And so we find that uh, going into the book of Acts, just because uh, they were filled with the Holy Ghost and just because uh, they were followers of Yeshua, they kept the spiritual structure of traditional Jewish living for their lives. They continued the Messianic Jewish lifestyle uh, that they had been living before, only now they were filled with the power of the Holy Ghost and, and washed in the blood of Yeshua and uh, created a new man, praise the Lord, uh, but continued to live within the uh, divinely ordained spiritual structure that God has given us in the Tanakh, in the Bible, and really God has given it to us in the Brit Chadasha, uh, the New Testament also. Uh, it is also, it should be noted that Peter uh, said that he had, nothing had ever come into his mouth that was a uh, trafe or that was unclean or ritually unclean, no food. Uh, he still did not eat pork, uh, apparently, or shellfish, 
Uh, basically, Peter kept living according to the laws of Kashrut, um, not for salvation, but uh, because he had determined that that was the will of God uh, to live by as far as uh, he was concerned. And so we find apostolic believers in the New Testament, the apostles themselves, continually uh, living the Jewish lifestyle in the book of Acts after being born again. And God chose Cornelius, one who lived like that already, to give the Holy Ghost first to. That's it for today. Uh, we'll pick up next week more about the Jewishness of the book of Acts. Please go to our Facebook site, uh, uh, forward slash or backslash app tab, or go to our website, apptab.org. Uh, like us on Facebook, like us on YouTube. Please get the word out, share, like, and help us get the word out about, uh, I believe, the revival that is happening right now of Messianic Jewish living in the Apostolic Church. It is the future of the church, and it will be like that when the Lord returns. Shabbat Shalom again. And Shavuot Tov, have a great week, and uh, Lord bless you today.